students. Welcome back to another topic in science class. And we are quickly winding down for the year, ladies and gentlemen, as we begin today our 23rd topic of this series. And this topic is all about renewable energy sources as opposed to non-renewable energy sources. And specifically this week, we're going to be focusing on two renewable energy sources in particular, and they include wind and water energy. So today we'll focus on wind and tomorrow we'll focus on water, but let's dive into our notes Actually, we'll dive into our notes tomorrow in the water. Why don't we fly a kite to our notes today with the wind? Oops. <laughs> uh, that was probably you folks turning me off there because of my bad jokes. All right, now let's continue in our notes here, and let's focus on wind energy specifically today, but I'll, I'll mention at the onset here that wind and water energy very simply put, is the production of electricity. And we know what electricity is, the flow of electrons. We know how electricity can be generated using those principles we learned about over the last two weeks, if you recall. And with both wind and water, Turbines can be rotated around due to the power of wind and water in order to generate electricity. So wind and water energy in broad terms is the production of electricity by using the flow of air or water. Now, our notes today and tomorrow are going to be relatively short because I do want to show you some videos here each day. And you'll see there is a hyperlink here. But as you know, to avoid any copyright infringement, I will link these additional videos to you after this lesson video. So let's again focus now on wind energy. I want you to think back to previous topics in previous years. You may recall when we studied earth science, we studied how wind forms in the first place. You may remember that wind is a result of the uneven heating of the Earth's atmosphere. When one part of the atmosphere is heating up, hot air rises. Another part of the atmosphere is cooler and sinks. And the direction of flow horizontally on the surface of the earth we call wind. Wind is the flow of air resulting from the uneven heating of earth's atmosphere. Now, wind exists everywhere on planet earth. Sometimes the wind is stronger, sometimes the wind is calmer, but as long as the sun is shining and as long as the earth is a sphere, there's going to be uneven heating of the Earth's atmosphere, and it will ultimately result in the production of wind. There will always be wind. And sometimes the strongest winds are associated with the strongest storms, which have to do with uh, various weather patterns of cold fronts moving through, and, and maybe that jogs your memory of of studying earth science years ago when we studied weather and climate. But moving forward, how can wind energy be tapped into? Well, for hundreds of years, people have been using windmills. Windmills have been around for a long time. And even until the mid-1800s, were one of the primary sources of power in, in parts of even our country. In the Midwest, for instance, windmills were used to pump water out of the ground. Uh, think about it. Mid-1800s, electricity may have been known of by some of the world's greatest scientists, but 
no average normal human being on the planet was using electrical energy up until later in the 1800s. And so we had to energize the Industrial Revolution somehow. And one of those ways was through the use of windmills. Uh, the Great Plains in the Midwestern United States, windmills can still be seen today dotting the landscape and still functioning, in fact, because when there's wind, where there's wind, why not take advantage of it? Now, windmills have taken on a new appearance in, uh, in more recent days, but uh, other countries have also used wind power, uh, you know, historically and currently. The late 1800s to the mid-1900s, however, uh, some folks, some wealthy individuals started to tap into this new form of power called electricity. And some enterprising individuals, if they were wealthy enough, might have even built or utilized or converted windmills into local electrical generating stations. Now, we can generate a lot of electricity commercially now with windmills, but a hundred years ago, this was a newfangled technology. And those who wanted to stay on the forefront of the most recent trends going around in culture, like electric light bulbs, for instance, if they had money and they had a windmill, they'd convert that windmill into a power generating system like the electrical generators we talked about last week. But instead of using gasoline to power them, why not use the wind? And so, uh, you know, wind electrical power plants have been around for quite some time. But in the 21st century, in the modern day today, windmills are used to generate quite a bit of electricity. And that electricity that is produced is put right into what is called the electric grid. The grid, so to speak, is, is where we get our power from. It is generated really across the country in different ways in different places, whether it's through windmills or hydroelectric plants, which we'll talk about tomorrow, or if it's nuclear energy or coal plants or oil burning plants, no matter what, all of the electricity that is generated goes into this grid and goes out to power the public, you and me included. You plug something into an outlet and you are literally plugging in to the grid because that electricity is coming from a variety of different kinds of production sources, one of which today is wind. And I've got some cool videos I'm going to show you about windmills, the high-tech windmills here. But what do windmills do in, in a nutshell? They convert mechanical energy into electrical energy using generators. Maybe some of you have seen some of these ginormous wind farms that are located in different regions of our country and in the world. I know locally we have one windmill, a fairly large windmill, not too far down the street. But what a windmill does is use these blades. These blades are almost like airplane wings. They, they generate lift. And as the air flows onto these wings or these blades, it causes the blades to turn around. And as they turn around, inside the windmill is generator. And you know about electromagnets and generators from last week, that mechanical energy spinning around and around generates the electricity because of the relationship between electricity 
and magnetism and rotating those magnets through coils of wire causes there or creates an e a flow of electrons that then flows into the grid and people can utilize it. So windmills, pretty cool thing, but you can't use windmills everywhere because there are some limitations to the use of windmills. Just like everything else, you can't get something for nothing. And so windmills are not a cure-all, and they never will be making up 100% of our energy needs. It's just not practical. So here are some limitations to windmill usage in the production of electricity. Not to say that windmills are unimportant. They are, and they can supply a ready supply of electricity. But as I have mentioned, there are some limitations. So what are they? Well, first of all, wind is neither a constant supply or at a constant velocity. If you look at this map of the United States, there are different regions of the United States that are better suited to wind farms than other places. For instance, you see these red zones near the coastline on the East Coast, on the West Coast, the Great Lakes. These areas are really great for windmills because if you've ever been to the beach, you know that the wind is pretty much always blowing. Uh, and so when you've got a ready supply of wind, that might be a good location for a wind farm to generate electricity. And again, if you think about our study of earth science years ago, you may remember the sea breeze and the land breeze and how the direction of wind at the surface changes from day to night. Not a problem with windmills because windmills can simply be directed in the opposite direction to continue generating electricity. You'll also notice in the Midwest, there are large regions in the Midwestern part of our country that are very suited to wind farms as well because of something called the Chinook. The Chinook is a, an airflow, a dramatic airflow of wind here in the westerlies latitude where we have winds predominantly coming from west to east across our country. And right in here, we've got the Rocky Mountains. And so the air is squeezed over the Rocky Mountains and then unleash themselves into the Midwest. So the Midwest, you'll sometimes find large wind farms because the supply is a little bit more constant and a little bit more uh, uh, higher velocities in order to make it practical to produce electricity with wind farms. Here's another thing. Another limitation is that these variabilities in the production of wind uh, electricity can present some challenges. There, many of you have a device at home, probably, that you plug expensive equipment into before you plug them into an outlet. How many of you have ever heard of a surge protector? Perhaps you plug in your computer or your phone into a surge protector before you plug it into the outlet. Maybe you've got a big fancy TV at home that you do the same thing to. Well, why would you plug something into a surge protector? Well, when you plug something into the grid, sometimes there is a surge in electrical current that can arise. And if it does, and if you've got a very sensitive piece of electronic equipment plugged into that outlet, well, a surge could blow out your equipment. And so you buy surge protectors to protect you from that, from happening. Now, with windmills, windmills that generate electricity that feed into the grid, because windmill electrical generation is not constant 
there can be increases and decreases based on how strong the wind is. Those fluctuations can cause challenges to maintaining the grid at a certain level so that those surges don't affect homes and businesses that are connected to the grid. So there are some challenges, although scientists seem to be working out those challenges in ways to make the use of even variable productions of electricity. Now, there's another challenge that I don't actually have listed here, but I do have it shown. If you notice these two pictures here, what do you see in these two pictures in addition to blue sky and windmills? The answer obviously is birds. Birds don't often have the ability to navigate through windmills very well. In fact, in some windmill farms, entire flocks of birds can get chopped up pretty nastily. Uh, it wasn't too long ago at one wind farm in the Midwest that one of our nation's bald eagles, our national emblem, was whacked dead by the blade of a wind farm. Now, there are folks trying to work on technology that will prevent it from happening, but uh, it is difficult to control which direction the birds will be flying near a windmill. And if it is in the wrong place at the wrong time, whack, whoo, that could be a nasty end to those little Tweety birds. So that is a limitation, and it is a consideration that folks involved with renewable resources, energy production, and conserving our wildlife, folks like that are concerned about all of these different limitations and parameters. So uh, very quickly, that's our story about harnessing wind energy, but I am going to direct you now to a variety of videos that I think you will find both interesting and entertaining. So be sure to tune in to the videos I link you to here as I say, bye-bye.